Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In this week's video, I'm gonna be doing a positional for you lot. Zombie Apocalypse. Here is some um, 12 inch and I'm gonna positional weld this piece here onto it. So I've already flange welded that up. I've already put a socket on that and I'm just gonna butt it up to here and then just do a quick bead, um, a quick butt weld positional. So the way I'm gonna go about welding this, I'm gonna have a, a three mil gap. I'm gonna root it on a short circuit. Um, the cap's gonna be pulsed somewhere between 160 onwards amps. I don't know, I'm gonna turn it up on the gun as I'm welding, depend on how it comes out. Um, and I'm gonna do two runs. I don't need to do a hot pass on it because it's shed 20 pipes, so the pipe's only about six mil. This is all low pressure, um, only for heat and ventilation. So yeah, I'm gonna quickly buzz it up two runs and hopefully I can get some good arc shots for you lot. But this isn't a tutorial, this is, I'm just showing you lot something a little bit different. I don't always do positional welds on here, so I thought I'd bring you lot along for the journey for my final welds of this pipe. So as you can see, I've been running the gas quite a bit in this cold. This is the gas that I'm using. And for the wire, I'm using one mil solid core, copper free. And then for the root, I'm going to be rooting it on Fronius Synergic setting. Now that's basically, I control the amps and Fronius takes care of the, the wire speed as well as the voltage. So I'm going to be probably around 130 amps. This would be the voltage and this will be the wire speed. For me right now, this here is worst case scenario. I have a gap underneath of almost 10 mil and coming up to the top, no gap. So the measurement as well, from measuring from the face to the pipe underneath there is 10 mil too long. So I'm gonna have to pull this piece away and then shape this back which I don't like doing because when you're doing a positional you want to keep your prep even. So this is a, both sides were machine prep. So somewhere along the line, I've either done something wrong or the fittings aren't perfect. So now I need to prep that back so I can get a small enough gap, a gap something like that, instead of a gap this big. I'm feeling up the pipe right now to make sure the outside of the pipe is aligned, which would mean the inside is aligned, making it easier to root. Once I know the bolt holes and the face of the flanges are level and plumb to each other, I can move on to tacking it. I put my first sets of tacks on the top and then if you can see the V stand underneath is more on the elbow rather than sitting half and half on the elbow and pipe. Now that's so I can root the bottom of the pipe as well without having to move any V stand. Four tacks around an inch long should be enough to hold it together and then when you're doing your root run you can weld quarters to each other. To weld this is gonna be a challenge. Small gaps, big gaps, pipe alignment. The fittings are never properly aligned to the pipe. There's always, um, they're always off some way. So like here, I've got a lip at the bottom. There's a lip here at the bottom, no gap. The root will never come out perfect because there's so much inconsistencies in the um, prep. So. The best I can do is full penetration the whole way around. But yeah, should hopefully come out good. But before I even attempt to do that, I want to change my screens. So I have um, a fighting chance in doing the world's knife.
So, like I said earlier, I'm rooting this short circuit arc around 130 amps, and you can see my positioning. My, um, I'm trying to aim for the front of the molten pool. That way, there, I'm always moving forward without building up too much metal deposits on the inside. And um, if you aim towards the back of it, for example, you get too much heat in the root, and then it wants to blow through. So yeah, I'm aiming at the front. I'm keeping my gun tilted, um, so the tip of it is pointing upwards, just to um, help fight gravity pulling the molten pool down, stopping it from dripping. It's a bit challenging when you're trying to root big gaps like this. You're constantly fighting the molten pool getting too hot. That's why I'm having to move the torch so much up and down. Usually if the gap was smaller, you just hold it at the right position and then just move along. But the root came out okay. Um, yeah, that's all I can say is okay. I'm going to cut out the tacks and then feather back the starts and stops um, to a nice smooth transition. So hopefully you shouldn't see um, my tie-ins quick apologies i thought i was going to have more arc shots for this video and i just realized most of them my head's either blocking the camera view or you just can't really see what i'm doing but here i'm moving up and down i'm trying to um, keep the molten pool moving i don't want to stop at any moment because when it's stopping the metal's still going in and then you're dripping through somewhere so i'm just weaving up and down um, I'm trying to focus most of my time on the, the elbow at the bottom because it's thicker and gravity is pulling the molten pool down anyway so if you focus too much time on, on the, the top you end up getting undercut. A few tips I've learned along the way uh, making these you want to prep both sides of your fitting you want to make sure you have no landing edge that way there you know as soon as you see your keyhole opening up and then closing all you're getting is um, a root that's penetrating. If you've got like a landing edge both sides of one mil, one and a half mil here and there, um, you can't guarantee that you're getting your root pushing all the way through. So yeah, no landing edge. And then um, the power, make sure your power is perfect. Too low, you end up spending too much time putting too much heat in it and then you don't go anywhere. You just stagnate in a single position, pumping in uh, metal. And then when you're too hot again, it just, it's too fast. All you want to do is just blow through and then you have to almost tack it in, which you don't want to do. So, the root is done. Now, what I'm going to do, here's a quick little um, drawing of what I've just done. So, I've just done the root. Here's the root. But what I need to do, I need to grind the lower part and the top part. So, I need to stick a grinder in here. And it's the, the grinder in here, my, my um, cutting disc, I think it's like 3 mil, just to um, smooth out any of this um, overlap that you may get. So if I was to draw it more exaggerated, my root, the inside would come out nice, but the outside would come out um, smooth from the top, but there's a chance that it can overlap into the bottom and then leave little holes here so I'm going to cut into this part and then the top part and then that way there when I put my uh, uh, bottom run on that there would fuse nicely to the root and then the elbow and then when I put my second run on top of that again another drawing so my root's there so my first run would come out nicely and then again I would uh, grind the top part and then my second run will go on top of that and be smooth with no um, cavitation or any holes or anything inside of the root. So now it's time for the cap, like you just saw I've set the machine up to 175 amps pulse. Pulse welding is a, um, a welding process um, where the current is pulled. The pulls allows the molten pull to solidify enough 
that you can weld in all positions and this happens hundreds of times a second which is why it makes that unique noise if I didn't have pulse um, if I was on a manual setting I'd have a lot of splatter and um, when, when you start going up to thicker pieces of metal you get a lot of lack of fusion with the manual setting so um, that's why pulse is, is good so my position is slightly different when I'm putting on my cap um, for one my elbow is slightly higher I'm trying to keep the tip of the torch more horizontal rather than sticking up vertical because um, I don't need to touch the top of the pipe I only need to make sure that my um, my first run my first bead um, fuses nicely on the bottom edge to the elbow because on my second run that's when I can um, fuse it properly on the top but the problem is because it's pulse and so much wire gets filled in at once most of the time it does touch the top edge so what I'm going to do is grind a nice bevel into the top part of the cap so again to get rid of any cavitation but also it gives me a guide to where I'm welding next but most importantly it provides a recess where some of the excess metal can um, penetrate and sit so your second cap isn't so big because now the pipe's really hot and if you were to keep with the same power and then do a second run one it would drip down and, and two um, there's nowhere for it to really go so it would just look messy the second cap can be really hit or miss because one is harder to see I think after doing positional your, your lens is all dirty um, two you don't know what you're leaving behind you and right there perfect example somehow I've managed to drop down about five mil on my cap and then you can visibly see it luckily it's a class two um, so it's okay if it was a class one x-ray nah that wouldn't that wouldn't fly that would be a problem well this pipe's done now it's my first positional in a long time and this is my first pipe since the Christmas New Year break so I was a bit rusty. It came out okay. I'm, I'm personally happy with that. I don't know what you lot would say but um, the only annoying thing right here where I transitioned the gun from one angle to the other angle there's a dip down in the cap of the second run but other than that I'm happy with it. The second run's always harder to do because the pipe has a lot of heat in it already and then you're trying to balance the position so you have to pick up your elbow a little bit higher because you don't need to be at such an upwards angle because you, you're trying to fill in a, a specific size gap. But yeah, it came out alright. Now, my scheduling may change for this year. Instead of spamming use lot with a video every week, which is really hard for me to do, I'm going to either start dishing them out every two weeks or whenever I get them done really. So. Bear with me in the upcoming weeks and months with the content that I share, but there's still going to be more. So if you've stuck around for this long, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.